I'm Sylvia Knight from the Royal Meteorological Society and I'd like to encourage you to take your secondary geography students out of the classroom and to do field work with them and quite specifically to do some weather field work with them. In this film we're going to give you some ideas for some simple, cheap and engaging field work that you can do wherever you are, even if it's just outside in the school grounds, um, using instruments which aren't expensive, much might even be homemade, but really accessible instruments, which will hopefully make the weather both relevant and interesting to your students. You can make some weather observations without any kit at all. For example, what sorts of clouds are there? How cloudy is it? What sort of weather is it? Other observations require a very simple or even homemade kit. You can use bubbles for wind speed and direction or a homemade rain gauge for rainfall. Some instruments are cheap, versatile and robust. Infrared thermometers would be one of my main recommendations. Other instruments, such as anemometers and handheld weather stations, can be more expensive and delicate. Most schools will be able to investigate the impact of the built environment on the microclimate. This might just be the school buildings, or it might be in a nearby industrial or residential development. What is the impact of a particular building on the microclimate, the local temperature, wind speed and direction? In the winter, when the heating is on, you could use an infrared thermometer to see where the building is losing most heat. When the sun is shining, infrared thermometers are a great way to visualise albedos, the proportion of the sun's light that is being reflected rather than absorbed. In the summer, on a calm sunny day, you could use simple digital thermometers to make a temperature map around the building. That would also be interesting in the winter in the early morning after a clear calm night. On a windy day, use bubbles to investigate the wind pattern around the building. Watch which direction the bubbles are blown in. With a compass, you can turn that into a wind direction. In some places, the bubbles will just get caught in eddies and blow around in circles. These will be the places where leaves or litter gets trapped. You can estimate wind speed by marking out five paces, roughly five metres, in the direction the bubbles are travelling and time how long the bubbles take to go that far. Make a wind map around the building. How do the windy, cold or hot places relate to where your students like to wait around? You can even do a microclimate investigation inside the school. How does the temperature and humidity vary between classrooms on a day when the heating is on or when the sun is hot? How does this relate to the student's experience of the classroom or the teacher's experience of behaviour and attention? If you have a barometer, you should be able to see a pressure drop between different floors of the school. Pressure drops approximately one millibar for every 10 metres of height rise. Most schools will be able to investigate the impact of the natural environment on the microclimate. This might be a school field or a nearby park or a local rural area. How does the proximity to water affect the microclimate? This will work best on a calm, sunny day. You could measure the temperature with a simple digital thermometer, infrared thermometer or even a USB temperature data logger. Many digital thermometers will also tell you the humidity. How does that vary around a pond or river? This could be linked to urban heat islands and ways of reducing the impact of summer heat waves, which are predicted to increase as the climate changes. How does a hedge affect the microclimate? This will work best on a windy day, you could use bubbles to make a wind map upstream and downstream from the hedge. Does wind speed vary with height? Does the orientation of the hedge matter? How does the air temperature vary around the hedge? USB temperature data loggers would be useful for this too. You could look at the impact of the hedge on the diurnal range of temperature. Hedges can of course be linked to biodiversity, erosion and agriculture. You can include weather measurements in all kinds of different field work, whether you're looking at actually looking at the weather or at microclimates, or whether you're doing very different sorts of field work. So maybe if your students are, are taking a survey, are the answers that they're getting being affected by the weather? Are people more likely to give a positive response if the weather's good than if the weather's grey and damp and, and a little bit depressing? If you're looking at, at travel or at activities, whether they're le leisure activities or, or industrial activities, are they being affected by the weather? Um, and also, of course, you can look at how the, the microclimate is affecting the land use, but also how the land use is having an impact on the microclimate. So here in, in Zulfur Keys, we've obviously got man-made features. We've got the older waterways and the much newer buildings. Both those things are going to have an impact on the microclimate of the area. If you'd like to do some um, weather measurements in your fieldwork and you'd like to get your students using some weather instruments but maybe your school doesn't have any, um, then you can borrow weather instrument kits from the Royal Meteorological Society free of charge for a half-term period. You just need to get in touch with the Society via the MetLink website, that's metlink.org, and borrow those instruments for, for half-term.